We have some unexpected results from this study already, and they're summarized by three messages of hope. And I really want to slowly go through these messages of hope, which are really important for people to use this afternoon. This knowledge has been published, it's been presented internationally, but it's been too slow to be restated to pet owners when they present with their dogs with ruptured splenic tumors. And we really like to use this partnership with VetVine to emphasize these three points. The first one is that these ruptured splenic tumors are almost as commonly benign as they are malignant in these large older breed dogs. And so that means because the historical literature told us that these older large breed dogs almost always had malignant tumors, you know, veterinarians and pet owners often wondered, should I just euthanize my dog because it's so certainly going to be a malignant tumor? And we've learned that it's almost 50-50 benign malignant. And so certainly beginning the process by pursuing splenectomy is a good idea for many of these dogs. And you shouldn't euthanize using the misinformation that you believe that they're always malignant tumors. So that's the first message of hope. Don't be fooled into believing all dogs that have ruptured splenic tumors are going to be malignant and that it's an automatic death sentence. Take the next step, go to surgery, determine if the tumor is malignant or benign. If it's benign, most of the dogs are going to be cured with surgery alone. If it's malignant, there's more work that has to be done. Uh, but that first step is an important step to take. That's the first point. Second point is that in these large breed dogs that are older, we used to believe that surgery was going to be a, a risky thing. In state-of-the-art practices, almost all of these dogs will recover and walk out of the hospital in less than 40 hours. We found that it's greater than 95% of these dogs recover from surgery and walk out of the hospital. So the perspective that this is a risky procedure and should really be a question about whether you should do it is no longer true. And our research has really proved that. So those two points should have you conclude that splenectomy is a good first step and you shouldn't be misinformed into believing that euthanasia is a necessary first step. Euthanasia is always an option, but it's incorrect to be misinformed to pursue euthanasia. And that's the first point. And the last one is that based on the research we're doing, we're already seeing hints that we're on the right track towards delivering curative outcomes. And therefore, in the future, curative outcomes for dogs with hemangiosarcoma will be a, a likely outcome. And we want to work with you to deliver those curative outcomes to dogs. And that's the third point of hope that comes from these published data already. Published data in 41 dogs, or 250 dogs into this clinical trial, and we're seeing very similar results from this new research already. And gives me a chance to also thank our partnership with VetVine to bring this reach to a broader group of people because it frankly has been difficult to simply use the veterinary literature and veterinarians alone to bring this message into practice. And it's it's not because people aren't intending well, it's just hard to change practice. And it's helpful to have informed pet owners in the room challenging the veterinarian to to sort of react to the newest information. So we're hoping that this changes the care of patients. Um, and really, again, thank VetVine for allowing this partnership to share this message. So that's what I have. Excited to share this. And I hope to work with you again in the future.